Now joining me is the Alba Party MP, Neil Hanvey, to continue this conversation. And, and Neil, I do want to start on that issue of nuclear power that I was just talking with Matt about, because it's a slightly different situation in Scotland compared to the rest of the UK. The Scottish government has instituted for some years now a, a ban on new nuclear power stations being built uh, within yeah. Scotland. Is that something you're supportive of? I'm, I'm not supportive of new nuclear. I would be interested in new nuclear technologies that are uh, safer and have a, a, a much larger or much smaller impact on the um, uh, environment in the, the years after they've been productive. Um, but you mentioned, uh, I think uh, one of your guests mentioned a, a moment ago about the, Russia being a, 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 an energy superpower. Well, you know, that is exactly the profile of Scotland. Scotland is an energy superpower. We produce more energy through renewable um, means than we actually use as a country. Uh, we've got a quarter of Europe's renewable um, uh, uh, reserves. And of course, we've got, um, uh, re we're replete with uh, North Sea oil and gas, which is uh, a really important asset. And um, given the situation in Ukraine and the pressure not just on our the small amount of uh, uh, gas imports that we have in the UK, but um, in supporting Europe and their transition from their reliance on energy from Russia uh, onto more sustainable means in the future. So um, I, I think that there is a discussion to be had around how nuclear energy may be uh, advanced um, uh, with newer technologies. Mm. But at the moment, my um, myself and I, I would say my party are um, not in favour of an expansion of nuclear energy. There are tremendous opportunities in Scotland to completely rethink uh, how energy is um, generated and uh, delivered, uh, moving away from a national grid system, which makes investment in Scotland prohibitive um, because of the transmission costs that are inherent with a, a national grid system. Uh, and it would allow uh, energy to be generated and consumed locally uh, and for the communities who host that energy generation to see some community, a meaningful community benefit by way of jobs and, uh, and um, revenues from the uh, energy source. That, that's an interesting uh, perspective there, moving away from a national grid model to a more localised system, yes. although that may have uh, some knock-on effects in terms of if, if one part of the system goes down, maybe people are more at risk from power outages. I do, I do want to just refer back to that idea of North Sea oil and gas, of course, sure. an amazing resource for our country at the moment, although uh, we have committed to phasing that out likely over the course of this decade. Uh, whilst mm -hmm. it is clearly very important now for us and indeed for Europe as we move away from Russian oil and gas, that will yeah. one day turn off and probably one day fairly soon. When it when I, I think, that point? I, I, th I think there's, a, there's, there's going to be a continued need for oil and gas for a variety of different reasons. It's the, the important question is, how do we offset the carbon impact of that in a meaningful way? And that's why myself and, and other Scottish MPs are continuing to push the government to um, authorise the, uh, the Scottish cluster um, and the ACORN project so that we can do some meaningful work in carbon capture and storage. Mm -hmm. I have two large plants in my constituency at Moss Morin, one run by Shell, one run by ExxonMobil. And there's a real opportunity there because they're connected to the St Fergus pipeline uh, in the north of Scotland, the northeast of Scotland, and they are absolutely perfectly placed to start to explore how uh, um, carbon capture and storage can happen uh, in situ when the products are being used. And so, for example, the ethylene plant at um, Moss Morin, we will continue to need ethylene for the high quality, robust plastics uh, that will be used to build whether uh, hydro hydrogen cell or electric cars for the future. So there will be a continued need for hydrocarbons, but it's how we use them in a responsible way that's the but fundamental question. And that's, a, that's a point that I've been exploring with the government.